I had an old teacher when I was a kid that every any time that she tried to do anything like with her hand, she'd be like <laughs> sticking her tongue out. <laughs> I catch myself doing that now. I don't know if it's a getting old thing or what. I'm not sure if you guys have figured out our MO by now, but what we seem to like to do, what I seem to like to do, Christy not so much, is I like to play off videos that we've released in the past. Today is going to be no exception. Last week's video, we were comparing the last two firmware updates for the DJI Mini 2. Uh, we ran an urban area, I was flying low, there were a bunch of trees, got a lot of interference. It was just a terrible flight on both, on both ends. Rose and Jack both did terrible. Um, got a lot of uh, comments making the point that the reason that I was having so much trouble was because I was flying from sitting inside the car. Most of my flights I actually do fly from inside the car uh, for a couple of reasons. Well, a few reasons. The first reason is is I'm lazy. <laughs> the second reason is this is Florida, so it's, it's kind of warm out there. Thirdly, I was in West Virginia once and it, it was really cold. And then the main reason though is because it helps keep the sun, the direct sunlight off of the phone, uh, which will keep it from dimming so much. Anyway, that's the that's the purpose of today's test. We're going to go to another urban area. I'm going to fly the drone both sitting inside the car and standing outside the car on the same flight or the same flight path. And I'm going to see if sitting in the car really does impact the, uh, the signal. Sure it does. It's got to. I um, just don't know how much. I flipped the coin this morning before I left the house and Rose, Rose won the coin toss. So she's gonna be the star of the show today. Jack, unfortunately, has to sit in the box. I don't think he's too happy about it. If you guys wouldn't mind, leave a comment, and in the comments, let me know whether you fly from inside your car or if it's a no-no. There should be a Flagler Hospital, Flagler Health place up here on the left. And today is Sunday, it's Mother's Day. It should be closed, so I should be able to have a run of the parking lot. I wanna park right here, I think. So we're at the location that we're gonna fly. We're gonna go that direction because there's a lot of houses over there and we're gonna see if we can get some interference. All right, guys, we got 15 sites. Whoops, what did I just do here? I don't know what that was. <laughs> what the heck happened? Oh, there we go. It was on pro. I screwed that up as always. All right, so this, this is Rose, our, our second DJI Mini 2. And she's gonna be the one that's doing the flight today. So wish her luck. We're gonna do a control flight standing outside the car first. And man, that sun is bright. So let's flip over to her uh, screen. Let's get her started. Take off. Get her up in the air. Please. Let her hover for a couple of seconds like we usually do. Got 17 satellites, strong signal, brand new battery. I want to do my little forward, backward, side, side test. Everything seems like it's reacting appropriately. All right, so here we go. We're going to set the, uh, we're going to set the height up at 150 feet. I'm going to pull the gimbal down to 10% or 10 degrees. Okay, so we're getting there. All right, we're at 150 feet. We're gonna go whatever direction that is. We're gonna see when we get interference, so let's go. Come on, Rose, I know you can do it. And we're just gonna fly straight out until I see some interference with that signal. Nothing yet, we're still gaining in satellites. She's got a pretty good looking flight going. I may could probably go down to 100 feet and uh, get some interference a little bit quicker, but I want a better view. <laughs> All right, we're already a thousand feet out, so she's doing much better here than she did last week at the other place. But there's a bunch of houses here, so we should um, we should get some interference here. I would think pretty soon. 
nothing yet. We lost the bar, but we're still we're still in the in the white. So we lost the bar again. We're still on the white, 153 feet, and we're almost 2,000 feet out. Oh, there we go. We're down into the orange at 1,950-ish feet. So let me go a little bit farther and see what she has. Yeah, 1,950 feet or so is where is where it where it happened at. So let's hit return to home. We'll have her come home, and then we'll put uh, we'll put her back up in the air while I sit in the car. So remember, 1,950 feet. All right, guys, well, I'm back in the car. We're ready to do our second part of this test. Actually, I already did the second part of the test once. I forgot to hit screen record. So this is her third flight, actually, for the day. So sorry about that. Uh, I'm now also recording on the SD card. Um, but yeah, that was a rookie mistake. So let's get her up in the air. Let's get her started. Take off. Let's get her up in the air. The home point has been updated. I know that she's uh, I know that she's reacting the way that she should because I've already done the up down forward backwards test and all that. So let's get her up to 150 feet, sitting inside the car and see where the interference comes in. <clears throat> get the gimbal down to 10 degrees too. Ish. <laughs> the screen just went dark on me while I'm sitting in the car. It didn't go dark on me while I was set while I was outside. But it's dimmed on me now. It's kind of weird. At 153 feet, that's where we were for the first flight. All right, let's get this thing going. But where does the interference come in? <clears throat> She's along that same path that I took the first for the first flight, for the most part, close enough, I would say. But let's keep our eyes on that signal. Battery's still good. We're still along the line. Let me turn to the right just a hair here. Try to stay as close to that line as I possibly can. All right, we're 800 feet out, still no interference. Um, coming up onto 1,000 feet, still no interference at all. Not even a single line. I don't remember where she was when she lost that. There's, all right, so she lost, a, she lost one bar at about 1,200 feet. All right, she's lost it again. Still under power, still under good. She still has a good signal though. 1500 feet, she got her all of her signal back. <clears throat> we were at 1950. Oh, there we go. Okay, so just before 1700 feet, she lost, she went to, to orange. So I think it was around 1680. So let's keep going forward, see if she's recovered. Looks like she, oh, there she lost it again, 1800 feet. So around 1,800 feet or so is where she lost her signal, and she's she's not getting it back. Oh, she got it back. <laughs> Let me go a little bit farther. <laughs> oh, she lost it again. All right, so I'd say around 1,800 feet or so was the uh, was the the mark that she actually hit her or hit the orange. Not that much different from being outside the car, I tell you that. All right, let's get her home. Oh, and the screen magically came back to me as the flight was over. The screen came back to me. I would say Rose did a very good job. Let me get my sunglasses back on so I look cooler. Well, I'd say that Rose did an outstanding job. Give yourself applause. <laughs> she only went a couple of hundred feet more uh, while I was setting, or while I was outside the vehicle than when I was sitting in the car. I would say that's a result. Yes, she d it did interfere with me sitting in the vehicle a little bit. I don't think that it was very much. She was still able to respond to all of my controls. She returned home without a problem. Let us know in the comments what you guys thought of the little test. We appreciate you all watching. Have a great week. God bless. She says bye. <laughs>